From the very beginning of Christianity, the practice of baptism or immersion in water has been central to the practice of the church. In fact, whenever you visit a Church of Christ for the first time, you're most likely going to see a baptistry just like this, and you might wonder, well, why do you place such an emphasis on baptism? It's a subject that many people have differing opinions about in today's religious landscape. But the reason that we're so focused on baptism, in fact, that's what people might know us for, is our emphasis on baptism, is because when we open our Bibles, what we witness is how important it was to the early church. In fact, there are five specific areas which help us to see the importance of baptism, not only then, but now. Number one, baptism was done with a specific mode. In fact, the word baptism means immersion, immersion in water. For example, in Romans 6, verses 3 and 4, we see Paul using the language of burial. The old man is buried, and we're buried into the death of Christ. Whenever we bury someone today, we completely bury them. And whenever someone is buried in baptism, they're completely buried in water. You see that in the language where individuals go down into the water, in Acts chapter 8, for example, with the Ethiopian eunuch, and when they come up out of the water. And so baptism is an immersion. Some today might choose to sprinkle or to pour, but in reality, that's not baptism as the New Testament sees it. Baptism is an immersion. But not only is it a done with a specific mode, it's for a specific person. Whenever we see individuals being baptized in the New Testament, they are individuals who know the difference between right or wrong. They're adults or sometimes maybe what we might consider older teens, whatever it might be, different people are at different maturity levels. But the reality is, is that they know that they've sinned. They know that they have to change. They know that it requires an act of faith, that baptism is an act of faith in the powerful working of God. And so it's not done for infants, individuals who can't tell the difference between right or wrong, but rather for individuals who can be considered baptized believers. So it's for a specific person. Number three, baptism is for a specific reason. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, we see there that Peter tells the crowd that they're to be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. Baptism is where the grace of God intersects with the faith of man. It's the point in which God says, you're mine now. You're part of my family. You're part of my called out people. And so baptism is done for the forgiveness of sin. Some people spend their whole life wondering, when exactly was I saved? God gives us a point in which we can look back to and say, that's when I was saved. That's when, through my faith and my penitence, my confession of Christ as Lord, God forgave me of my sins within the water of waters of baptism. And so it's done for a specific reason. Number four, it's calling on a specific name. In Acts chapter 22 and verse 16, Paul said that, recur discussing his past conversion account, he said that he was calling on the name of the Lord for the forgiveness of his sins, to wash away his sins by calling on the name of the Lord. And so baptism, when we're baptized, isn't something that we're doing by our own power or our work but rather, it's our hearts calling out to God, Lord, save me. I need you to save me. I can't do it on my own. I need Jesus Christ. And so it's calling on a specific name. And then number five, it's for a specific life. Paul says again in Romans 6 and verse 4, we arise to walk in newness of life. And so when the old man is buried, the new man rises to walk and new life that you're given by God. What a beautiful, beautiful picture it is. Now, you might have questions about your baptism, and we would be more than willing to discuss that with you. We want to talk to you about the practice of baptism. We want to talk to you about your baptism to make sure that you've done what God has required of us in order to receive this new life and this salvation that he offers through his son, Jesus Christ.